Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead and start talking about um, empirical formulas today. Where we looked at last PowerPoint how we talked about how we got the percent composition. So basically what's happening today is we're taking the percent composition and we're going to figure out what the formula is. Now, an empirical formula is a formula that contains the simplest whole number ratio of atoms. Um, it's not necessary, necessarily the correct molecular formula. Uh, or the correct formula, but it's the simplest whole ratio. So if we take a look at the bottom, we have uh, boron trihydride. And we see that that is the empirical formula uh, because it's the simplest ratio possible. It's the most reduced version of it. And then we have uh, diboron hexahydride. And we see that, that that would be a molecular formula because it's not the simplest ratio possible. We see that we can reduce the 2 and the 6 uh, dividing them down to 1 and 3. Uh, and what we see is that we can have different molecular formulas, meaning we can have different variations of the same empirical formula. So we see that on boron trihydride, we have a 1 to 3 ratio between uh, boron and hydrogen. Uh, and we can have any multiple of that. So we can have, we see with diboron hexahydride, um, so we can have any variation of that 1 to 3 um, ratio. Now when we calculate the empirical formula from the percent composition, the first thing we have to do is we have to convert the percent to grams by assuming that there's 100 grams of the total sample. Basically what that means is we take the percent sign, erase that, and we just put grams, and that's letting us have a 100 gram sample because we know that the percent composition is always going to be the same um, throughout any amount. So we just use 100 and say, hey, that's what we have. Now, the next thing we do is we convert those grams to moles for each element using the molar mass. And remember that the molar mass for an element equals the atomic mass on the periodic table. Okay. Then, after we convert it to grams to moles, we identify the smallest mole value, basically the smallest number that we're left with, and we divide each mole value by that smallest value to give us our ratio, to give us our empirical formula. Okay guys, let's go ahead and work out some examples. Now, we see that the question asks us, quantitative analysis shows that a compound containing 32.38% sodium, 22.65% sulfur, and 44.99% oxygen, and it wants us, it says, to find the empirical formula. So we're going to work it out here, and I'll work it out for you, and then we'll see it all written nice and neat. Now the first thing we have to do is step one, we have to convert these guys to grams. So to do that, we have sodium, and we have sulfur, and we have oxygen. Now to convert it to grams, all we do is we take that percent sign, erase it, and just put grams. So we're going to have 32.38 grams, we're going to have 22.65 grams, and we're going to have 44.99 grams. Okay, and that's a sodium, sulfur, and oxygen. And we go ahead and mul uh, divide these guys out. And we're going to divide by their molar mass, which is the atomic mass on the periodic table. So 22.99, 32.07. And we'll have oxygen right at 16. Okay, guys, so we go ahead and work these on out and let's see if we get 1.408. Four, and we'll say it's four. And we're going to keep a lot of decimal places here because that's kind of important. And then we have 0 0.70626, and we'll say it's eight. And then we have oxygen right at 2.81188. Okay. Now, all we have to do here is we take the smallest value. So we're done with this portion. We have our answers, and we're working over here. And we see that we have the smallest value is going to be uh, 0 0.7, and that should be a 0, guys. It kind of looks like a 6, but it's a 0. And since that's the smallest, we're going to divide each number by that number. So 0 0.706268 and 0 0.706268 and 0 0.706268. We go ahead and divide these out, and guys, what we're going to get is we're going to get something very, very close to an approximate of 2, 1, 
and we see that on the bottom it is going to be 4. And what we'll see is it's a very close approximation of that. And guys, you can round um, in the hundredths place and round it up to a whole number. But guys, remember, never round in the tenths place. So our formula is basically just going to be Na2SO4, which is sodium sulfate. Okay, so written out all nice and neat, it'll look like this. We see we converted it to grams. Then we convert those into moles. And then we go ahead and divide that on out. And we see we get right around that. Okay. And we get sodium sulfate. Now, when we calculate the empirical formula from the mass composition, basically what it's talking about here, what we're doing is we're, we're skipping a step. Um, if they don't give us the percent composition, they just tell us how much it weighs or how much is in each sample. All we do is we just skip the first step and then follow all the other steps the same way. Okay, so in our next example, we see analysis of a 10.15 gram sample of a compound containing phosphorus and oxygen is known to contain 4.433 grams of phosphorus. We find the empirical formula. So we have the mass of phosphorus. Now all we need is the mass of oxygen. So to do that, we just subtract it. And we see that we now we have both masses. So we have the mass of oxygen, we have the mass of phosphorus. And all we do is just pick up with our next step of changing that into moles. So we take those guys and convert the values into moles. And we see that we would have uh, 0 0.1431 and then 0 0.573. And we see that the smallest number is 0 0.1431. So we divide both of those values by that and we get 1 and 2.5. Now we cannot round uh, 2.5 up to 3. So we go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both of these guys by 2 to get the simplest ratio possible because a 1 to 2.5 ratio is always going to come out to be a 2 to 2.5. So we multiply it by 2 and we get diphosphorus pentaoxide. All right, guys, if you have any more questions on empirical formulas, watch the video over the extra practice problems.